Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the, another uh, episode of The Zoo Comes to You. My name is Buck. This is Corey. We're two of the reptile keepers here at the Central Florida Zoo. And this is my good friend, Marley. Marley is our American crocodile. He's also the largest carnivore here at the zoo. He is approximately 12 feet long and weighs somewhere between 700 and 1,000 pounds, which even at the lightest estimate is still about 400 pounds larger than our heaviest black bear. Now, we, they are actually one of four species of crocodile, true crocodile native to the Americas, along with the Orinoco crocodile, the Cuban crocodile, and the Morlets crocodile. But uh, the American crocodile is special in that it is the only one that you will find here in North America, specifically right here in Florida. Now, you'll have to go a little bit further south to find them uh, down more towards the Miami, into the Everglades areas, and down towards the Keys. But uh, they have been steadily making their way northward with the increasing global temperatures. In fact, one was found in Brevard just last year. But because of this, this is the only place in the world where you will find both alligators and crocodiles sharing the same habitat. And because of this, one of the most commonly asked questions we get here at the Central Florida Zoo is how do you tell the difference between a crocodile and an alligator? And they do look very similar, but uh, there are quite a few differences between them, uh, actually. Their family trees actually split off about 200 million years ago. So although they look very similar, they're actually not as closely related as you might think. But again, they do look very similar. So the main difference between the two of them is the shape of their head, because that's typically all you get to see of these animals. As you can see with Marley here, uh, pretty much his entire body is underwater, except for that skull of his. But if you look closely, you'll see he has a very elongated V-shaped snout. There we go. Uh, if you were to look at an alligator, however, you'll see that they have a more broad U-shaped snout. In addition to this, alligators and crocodiles are a different coloration from each other. Uh, alligators tend to be a dark gray, charcoal, almost dark blue, black coloration, while crocodiles tend to be uh, more colorful. They come in grays, tans, browns, greens, even bright yellows. So they are very different from each other. There we go. Now, these animals are what we affectionately refer to as obligate, opportunistic, generalist carnivores. And that's just a fancy way of saying they eat meat and they're not picky about where it comes from. So in the wild, they are going to be eating deer, they are going to be eating boar, they are going to be eating uh, raccoons, muskrats, waterfowl, turtles, fish. American crocodiles in particular really like crustaceans for some reason, not that I blame them. But here at the zoo, we give them a few different things. As you saw, I was throwing them a few biscuits. These are uh, called crocktail. They're made by the Missouri Company. And and that's uh, fish-based uh, uh, dry uh, pellet pa uh, food that is packed with all the vitamins and minerals a crocodilian needs to grow happy, healthy, and strong in a zoological setting. But they're not exactly the most filling thing, so in addition to that, we also give them a few whole prey items, and we're actually going to be feeding him some things uh, right here, uh, right now. Uh, so we are going to be feeding him a few rats, uh, so, uh, be a little chicken, uh, and also a rabbit. And although they are not alive, they are whole, so if anybody's squeamish, this is your only warning. So I've got my rat right here, and I'm going to uh, show this to Marley, and he's going to get very excited, as you can see. As you heard right now, that is called a jaw pop. Go on, buddy. Back up a little bit. And that's him closing his jaws as powerfully as they can. They have some of the strongest jaws in the animal kingdom, closing with about two to 3,000 pounds of force. To give you an idea of what that's like, that's the equivalent of having a small truck dropped on you from about five feet up. Not a pleasant experience, and it's all in that very small, compact area. go and another biscuit for him good boy now as you saw with the rat he did not chew his food he swallowed it whole because their jaws aren't designed for chewing prey instead they will grab a hold of whatever they can and they will use their powerful jaws to crush it and then swallow it whole now if they get a hold of something that is too big to eat in one bite they will incorporate what the media has dubbed the death roll that's where they will take their food into the water and they will grab onto a leg or an arm or a head or something like that a bite-sized piece and they will use their powerful tails to rotate around as quickly as possible and tear off bite-sized chunks which they will then swallow whole now if they eat too much in one go uh, what they will do is they will store their food for later usually in a burrow somewhere Now we do. Okay. We also have our little chicken for him here. 
Now those t and those tails of theirs are actually incredibly powerful because of that. They can actually get about two thirds of their body out of the water uh, uh, and by jumping and using that uh, tail because it's all laterally compressed muscle. Okay. Come on, big guy, you can get it. Good boy. Now, despite their very primitive reptilian appearance, they are actually very intelligent animals. They do have a true cerebral cortex, and this is the part of the brain responsible for pattern recognition and uh, memory. So they can recognize times of the day, they can recognize patterns, they can recognize individuals and people and voices. In fact, uh, they can even be taught some basic commands. So I can go, Marley, here! And uh, you know, as you can see, he kind of reacted to my voice. I have to back up a little bit, bud, because I'm not going to be feeding him anything with my bare hands. Now, we do have one last thing that we are going to be feeding him, and uh, because of this, I'm going to talk about one last thing, and that's my favorite part of this talk, is their family tree. Looking at him, you'd think uh, they're probably very closely related to lizards and snakes and things like that. But uh, they're about as closely related to a lizard or a snake as you and I are to our cats and dogs at home. And this is because they are not uh, uh, very closely related to other reptiles. They are part of a group of animals called archosaurs, or ruling reptiles. And this includes animals like pterosaurs, dinosaurs, crocodilians, and their prehistoric ancestors. And because dinosaurs are a part of that group, so are birds. So they are actually more closely related to our macaws and our hornbills than they are to any other reptile. Now we do have one last thing that uh, Corey's going to give him because uh, I think I've stalled on long enough. So Corey's going to be giving him a, a, his rabbit for today. Marley. There we go. And that about does it for our talk. If anybody has any questions, we'll be around for a few minutes to answer them. If not, we hope you enjoyed the show, and uh, we can't wait to be seeing you again, hopefully very soon. So thank you all, and enjoy the rest of your day. Well, we do have some questions from our viewers today. Ava wants to know what they feel like. Uh, what do they feel like? Uh, it's actually very unique. It's uh, Imagine a very, very big turtle. It's kind of smooth, but bumpy at the same time. Uh, Jackie and Bill say hello, Buck and Corey. And <laughs> Lily, Lillian wants to know how long they get. Uh, it depends on the crocodile. American crocodiles usually max out at around this size. So he is a pretty average example of how big they can get. But uh, there are reports of them getting upwards of 16 feet or more and even into the 20 foot range. However, uh, any individuals like that uh, have been uh, gone for a very, very long time. They, they've steadily been shrinking due to overhunting. Thankfully, because they are now protected species in uh, the Americas, their, their numbers have been increasing, and hopefully their size as well. Emma would like to know what predators would eat them. Uh, that's an excellent question. Uh, once they get to Marley's size, uh, they don't have any predators. They are considered apex predators. However, uh, when they are still very young, they can be eaten by a multitude of things. Uh, birds of prey, other crocodilians especially, because while crocs are very good parents, they can also be cannibalistic, especially to an individual that's not a part of their family. Jackie would like to know what you're feeding them today. Uh, uh, like I said, we got uh, some biscuits for them, the croc chow biscuits. We gave them a rat and uh, a small quail, and we also gave them a rabbit. Aria wants to know if they are easy to train and how long their tails are. Okay, uh, yes and no for in regards to training. Uh, it's easier to train them when they are young because you, they get familiar with you and they can be a little less temperamental. Uh, once they get to uh, be adults, you have to be very strict with them, but uh, you can train them because uh, they do tend to be very food motivated as you saw with Marley today. But uh, in regards to their tails, usually their tails are about half to a third of their body depending on the type of crocodile. Uh, we did have a donation just now, so thank you to everyone who's helping us out at this time. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. We do appreciate the donations. Every little bit matters. You mentioned how old he is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, no, I did not. Uh, Marley is actually one of the older residents. He's actually been here the longest out of any animal in our collection. Uh, we're not entirely sure how old he is exactly, but based on best estimates, uh, he would have turned 51 as of December. Okay. 
We don't seem to have any more questions, but Elise wants to say how much she loves this crocodile. I love him too. He's my favorite animal at the zoo. And that right, bud. Such a good boy. Okay, and I think he deserves one more biscuit because he did such a good job. Good boy. Any other questions, we'll answer on our, our um, website, so be sure and look back. Yeah, and thank you all once again for, uh, for joining us today, and uh, we'll see you again hopefully very soon.